Good evening, friends, and welcome once again to this Wednesday night reflection here on Facebook, something that by now has become a regular part of the life and work of St. Columbus Presbyterian Church. It's my privilege and my joy on behalf not only of myself, but also Alistair and our families to extend warm greetings to you wherever you are and whenever you might be watching this to be reminded of our continued prayers and concern for you and for your families and for your loved ones. This is week three of a five-week series of reflections that we've entitled Growing Faith in Isolation, using these moments together to reflect a little bit on the question of how we can use this time of isolation, of being separate from one another, to grow in our faith journey, to deepen our relationship with Jesus Christ. Tonight, we're going to spend some time focusing on what is perhaps one of the most unpopular aspects of our Christian faith, discipline. Discipline is something that we, we kick against from the earliest age. It's part of our DNA to, to rebel against discipline. And we've seen some of that in this lockdown period as well, both the best of it and the worst of it. But there can be no denying that the need for discipline in our faith journey is absolutely vital for a vibrant and a growing faith. And so it is crucial that we spend a little bit of time reflecting on this. So as we prepare to read a portion from Acts, Acts chapter 2, I invite you to join me in one of the most ancient of our Christian disciplines, prayer. Could you join me as we pray together? Most gracious and loving God, in the journey of life, you are our guide and our companion. From our beginning to our end, you are with us through friends and family, through teachers and those we look up to, through the voices of those we respect and know, and sometimes even through the voices of our antagonists or complete strangers. Through these, you make this journey with us. At times, encouraging us and comforting us. At other times, tending our wounds and carrying us. When we think we cannot take one more step. In these past few weeks, we have been on a strange and unnerving journey. And yet you've been right here with us. With us in our discipline and our devotion. With us in our weakness and our failure. With us in our fear. And with us in our hope. Remind us again tonight of your abiding presence. Make us more deeply aware of your nearness. And the gift of our being united to one another in you. 
In your name, Lord Jesus, we humbly pray. Amen. There can be little doubt that discipline is the key to growth in almost anything and everything that really matters. Whether it's our education, whether it's our careers, whether it's our relationships with the ones we've chosen to love. In anything that is of true value in this life, discipline is key. And it's true for our faith journey as well. It's true for our relationship with Jesus. I'd like to read to you just one verse from Acts chapter 2, verse 42. A verse that describes for us the, the early characteristics of the first of Jesus' followers, of the disciples. Acts chapter 2, verse 42, we read this. They devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, to the fellowship, to the breaking of bread, and the prayers. They devoted themselves to these disciplines that marked their very identity, that stood at the center of who they understood themselves to be, and how they gave expression to their worship of Jesus, to their relationship with him. This time of isolation has given us a strange but a, but a beautiful opportunity to make the most of some of these disciplines. Prayer and reading, for example, perhaps even fasting. There's this tremendous opportunity in this time of isolation to give these disciplines a place of priority in our lives again. And let's be honest about it. For many of us, and note I say us, this time of isolation has been a, a peculiar time of actually letting go of some of our disciplines. For the longest time, it was difficult, if not impossible, illegal even, to exercise in the way that we're used to. Disciplines like sitting down with our family for mealtimes, or making a regular commitment to meet with ones who, who we love and who we care for. These are disciplines that, that we've, we've neglected. In some cases, we've been compelled to neglect because we're not allowed to do them. But the same is also sadly true of some of our Christian disciplines, some of our spiritual disciplines. And tonight, I'd like to use this opportunity to remind you again of of the giftedness of this time that is sometimes difficult to see but is nevertheless there that we have this tremendous opportunity to devote ourselves again to some of these essential critical disciplines in our faith journey to make a, a regular daily commitment to set aside time for prayer and for reading and perhaps even, as mentioned a moment ago, for fasting. And to, to include our families and our friends in the exercise of these disciplines. To share them with others through, through social media or through sending out notes to ones that we make this journey with. But there is this wonderful promise, potential, in this time, to make again disciplines like prayer and reading a priority. Richard Foster, who wrote the book A Celebration of Discipline, makes a, a startling but very true statement in that book. He says that superficiality is the curse of our age. He makes the statement because he observes how dependent and reliant we've become on instant gratification. Discipline is a, a reminder, painful at times, that the things that really matter don't come instantly. They take time. They demand effort. They require work. And the same is true for our faith journey. If we want this, this time of isolation from one another to be a time during which our faith grows and our relationship with Jesus deepens, then we have to fight the urge for superficial instant gratification. 
We have to commit ourselves and devote ourselves to the disciplines of our faith. At the very least, to the disciplines of prayer and of reading. So as we continue through this time, would you be encouraged to set aside time on a daily basis to devote yourselves to prayer? Set aside time on a daily basis to spend time reading the scriptures. For it is in the constant exercise of these disciplines that our faith is strengthened, that our relationship with Jesus is deepened. To that end, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be and remain with each one of us, now and forevermore. Amen. Friends, before we bring this time of reflection to a close, just two quick words regarding what you might expect coming going forward. Um, the piece of music that you heard at the beginning of tonight's reflection will be repeated again now at the end. It's a piece of music that was recorded for us by William Earle, our music director here at St. Columbus. And it's the tune to a hymn that will be the focus for Friday morning's podcast that will be led by Alistair. Some of you might not be aware, but most of you will be, that every Friday morning at nine o'clock, Alistair puts out a, a podcast. And in recent weeks, he's been focusing on certain hymns, hymns that are known here at St. Columbus and hymns that form a central part of, of our worshiping tradition. This coming Friday, the tune that you heard earlier tonight and will hear again at the end of this reflection is the tune to the hymn that will be focused on on Friday morning in the podcast and will be sung in Sunday service, which will be streamed online at nine o'clock. We have a guest preacher for Sunday service. Nancy Duff from Princeton will be preaching in the service um, and we're grateful to her for making her time, her resources, her energy available. She's a friend of our congregation and uh, many of us, I'm sure, would be looking forward with great expectation, anticipation to her sermon on Sunday morning. Speaking of Sunday morning, we will also be continuing with our activity, with our effort to show solidarity for some of the businesses in our Parkview community. We'll be making available to them our space and some of our resources on Sunday morning. We encourage you during your regular exercise and on your regular route to, to come past the church and to show some support for people that play a central role in our community, the community that St. Columbus has been placed into and, and called to serve, together with the larger community as well, of course, for whom we continue to pray, to show concern, support, and solidarity in, in very many different ways. Friends, I invite you to sit back, to enjoy, to continue to reflect, while we listen to the piece of music that is recorded to us, for us, by William O. God bless you. Amen.